Maroon to School leaders, my name's Adam Voigt. I'm the founder and the CEO of Real Schools. I'm delighted to be running an event for you on the 14th of November at 9.30am called Restorative Classrooms, Strong Classrooms, and we're going to be running it at the Norwood Sporting Club, and I'm really looking forward to meeting all of you there. Uh, this is a quick video invitation to principals, uh, to fellow school leaders, to leadership teams, uh, even to classroom practitioners to come along on, this for, uh, on the day for this free event uh, to find out what it is about restorative practices and practicing restoratively that has been so beneficial to me across a, a 25 year career in education. First of all, I guess the benefits came to me as a teacher and it came to me in two ways. Uh, number one is that practicing restoratively has allowed me to be more effective in my work. I genuinely feel a sense of progress and even better, I can demonstrate a measurable progress in my work when I practice restoratively. Uh, even just uh, in the, the few days leading up to recording this video, I, I worked with a handful of teachers in some of our partner schools and all of them were talking about how their ability to let the restorative practices philosophy impact their instructional mode just meant they got through more stuff at school. I said, what do you think that's all about? And uh, what are the benefits of that? And they said, it's funny, when you get through more stuff, when the kids are more engaged, the behavioural problems that we were otherwise being challenged by seem to reduce in number, seem to reduce in frequency, seem to reduce in severity, and that's a good thing. The second thing that practising restoratively did for me as a teacher is it allowed me to feel less stress. And um, that sounds like a lofty ambition, but the truth is that I think most people go home stressed and most people go home losing sleep over is that they there's a gap between their purpose and their practice they believe one thing and they behave another and it causes them stress associated with anxiety embarrassment and even perhaps a little bit of shame and when i practice restoratively the gap between my purpose and my practice is really small and when i do get it wrong I know what to do about it because I've got a full practice framework that allows me to take swift, decisive and restorative action that allows me to get back on track again really quickly. When that happens collectively and across an entire staff, here's what I think happens for school leaders, is that you develop, you embed and you sustain a strong relational culture around your school in a way that no program that I've been able to discover so far has been able to do for me. I talk a lot to people around school culture and, uh, and indeed that's what Real Schools was designed to do, was to help schools to be able to build and to sustain those cultures. Um, and everyone I speak to tells me that school cult the culture of a school is incredibly important. Uh, then I ask them what it is and people get nervous uh, and the words they use tend to be a little vague. Uh, we talk about vibes and we talk about atmospheres. Uh, it's difficult to focus on those on building school culture if we're not quite sure what it is. So school culture for me is a behavioural set and it's a set that comprises two types of behaviours. Behaviours that we encourage, that we say that's fantastic, love that, do more of it, helps us live out our values. And then there are the behaviours that we tolerate. And what restorative practices has done for me as a school leader is give me a vehicle, is to give me a repeatable methodology for challenging the behaviours that are in the, in the tolerate group such that I can move them one at a time over to the encourage group. Schools that have strong cultures are not necessarily those who just by chance tend to have larger groups of behaviours that they encourage than tolerate. It's schools that have a repeatable methodology for challenging behaviour in a strong, supportive, firm and fair way that allows them to actually build that culture with genuine intention and that's so exciting when it happens. I've been proud of the work that we've done at Dorset Primary School, school with Palmer Copper uh, to be able to create such a culture and we have come to the conclusion that that has been driven by the clear intentional work that has been done by the entire staff around contributing to the sort of culture that they want. That's what, re that's what restorative practices does. Um, so I know that's getting me, me getting a little deep and a little philosophical with you in an introduction or video. I promise you that the day is going to be highly engaging, uh, that the workshop will be thought provoking. And more than that, I think that it'll compel you into decision 
it'll compel you to get head back to your school and to do something different. So to that effect, I'm hoping and, uh, and aiming that this two and a half hours is a real pivotal turning point for your school. And, uh, and I encourage you to get as many people as you can along on the Norwood, to the Norwood Sporting Club on 14th of November at 9.30am. And, uh, and I certainly am looking forward to meeting anybody that you can have in the room that day and, uh, and giving you an experience that I think you're going to remember for a really long time.